Hello listeners and welcome back to another episode of The Beautiful Game. I'm with my main man, Dej, and we've also got a very special guest today. Yeah, I'm doing good though. I've been looking forward to this um, episode. This is someone that we've seen grow, develop, and I'm looking forward to unpicking his story because it's one where there's been a lot of hope, there's been setbacks, but also there's going to be the comeback and we're looking forward to see where the next stage of his journey leads him. And we're definitely looking forward to the comeback. So before we go into it, I just want to plug our socials. Um, the Beautiful Game Podcast on YouTube, um, at podcast underscore TBG on Twitter, and at pod underscore TBG on Instagram. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. So today, we're, we're happy to announce that we're joined with Charlie Masunda. How are you, brother? I'm good, guys. Thank you for having me on. No, I love. We've been trying to get this one done for a few <laughs> weeks. So we're, we said, listen, we'll travel down and make it happen, <laughs> man. So <laughs> it, we're it. happy to have you on, bro. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So look, look let's just, you know, deep dive into it. Where are you at at the current moment? Like, what are you doing now as things stand? Um, so, yeah, right now I'm just um, getting fit, training with the um, under 23s at Chelsea um, from now until the end of the season. Mm. Then obviously, I don't know if you guys saw, but... Um, I just released um, an Instagram post, I think a couple of weeks ago, um, that I'm just now seeing out my contract um, and I'm going to leave the club after 10 years at Chelsea. So that's basically what I'm doing now. I'm training in the 23s, staying fit. It's good to be back on the pitch again after a long time. Um, I'm happy just training, really. And then we'll see um, what happens next year. Mm, I saw that and I was like, "Raw, this is very, very emotional. So was that decision led by the club or did you say, you know what, I want to leave? Um, it definitely wasn't my decision. Um, obviously, I came at Chelsea at 15 years old. My my dream, my ambition was always to play for Chelsea. Um, and I always said I was either going to leave because I wasn't good enough or if I was told I have to go. Um, obviously, having been out for the last two or three years, it was a bit difficult with my injury. Um, I did everything I could. I worked as hard as I could last year. More importantly, everything with COVID and, and everything that was going on to just be fit. To be able to be um, a part of the to be with the first team, obviously um, in the preseason, which was something I I did, and I was very happy about it. I was very optimistic that I was going to be able to train with the first team and be back in the team um, for preseason, obviously, and then build up my fitness. So that was always my goal. So I put everything in terms of getting back to that stage, um, which I ultimately did. Um, and then the preseason started. I was feeling really well. Yeah, we really saw well. the pictures on Sky um, Sports. I saw like, yeah, saw yeah. you drink water. Everyone's like, you know what, Masunda's back now, isn't it? Hopefully, we can see him <laughs> kick on. Yeah, I was, I was um, fully fit, so I was back, ready to be the the first team squad. I obviously, was in the the preseason squad, which was great. Um, so I was so happy, obviously, just being on the pitch, training again with the guys, um, being back at Cobham. Obviously, after such a long time, was was fantastic for me. Um, and then we went for pre-season, the pre-season tour in Ireland. So I trained, we trained for like a week. Um, and then we had a game against Peterborough. I just missed out on that game because I had a, a niggle, but it wasn't anything too big. I um, missed out on that game. And then we traveled to Ireland um, for pre-season. And then there was a couple of games there. And then a game against Bournemouth, I think it was. And a week after against Arsenal. And then the league was mm. starting. Mm. I think the Super Cup game against Villarreal. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what happened is I went to, well, we went to Ireland, um, I was fit back into training. Um, and then the day before the first game in Ireland, um, I had COVID. Oh. So, yeah, so I was out for 10 days. So I had to stay over there. The team traveled back. They came all the way back here. They played against Bournemouth and Arsenal. I missed out on those games. I was out for 10 days. Um, and then after that, uh, basically I was very upset, obviously, cause I'd worked mm. hard to get back into the preseason fold. Um, so from there, after coming back, I was still feeling great. I mean, I had a good relationship with the manager that was there. Um, spoke with him. He had a good understanding of where I was, my situation after two years. And we had the same plan, really. Um, but there was obviously my contract situation mm. that I had a year left, uh, which was this year. And so that, was, that had nothing to do with the manager. Um, he knew basically what I wanted to do. I expressed that I wanted to stay and be a part of the squad. Work my way up, obviously, through merit by training hard and basically getting more and more fitness and momentum throughout the season. Um, and I explained my situation. He understood very, very, very clear where I was. And he he was optimistic. He was um, very happy about the way I was training, um, the way I was moving as well. So I had no problems there. And then obviously the, the main thing was over in my head was the contract. So um, that was the situation really. So, so yeah. Um, was, but was there any talks with the club? Like, did you have any conversations with Maria Graniskaya or anything? 
Yeah, so I had the conversation with the technical director, which mm. is Peter Cech. Um, so obviously there's a, a situation at Chelsea where you've got the lone players mm. and yeah. you've got the first team squad. They train separately. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, at the pre well, during the pre-season we were mostly all together. So because the lads who were on the, in the Euro 2020s uh, yeah. were coming back late. Yeah. So there was a merge of a lot of players. Uh, and my one was a bit of a weird one because I wasn't really a lone player. Because I hadn't played for a couple of years, yeah. mm -hmm. um, and then obviously I was in that fold where I was in the first team preseason squad, but um, I couldn't have a direct link in terms of a decision of me staying with the manager straight away because I hadn't been in the team. So obviously he had to speak with the technical director and all the people above, and the main thing was my contract. So that had nothing to do with the manager. So that went into the hands of the technical director, um, who's Peter Check, obviously. And when I came back. From I think they had a few games that the, when I came back from COVID, trained for a week or so, um, and they had a game against Villarreal. Oh, um, yeah. yeah, and then after that there was the pre, the literally the Premier League season was starting. So what happened was um, came back from COVID, uh, trained for a week. The pre, the first game of the season for them was the that that, fr that um, Super Cup game against Villarreal, mm. uh, which they won. And then after that, the week after, literally the Premier League was starting yeah. against Crystal Palace. I think it was. Mm. Um, and then the following day of that game against Crystal Palace, there was like for the guys who returned late from the pre from the from the Euros, mm. there was like a friendly game against um, forget the, the name of the team now Weymouth I think it was. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, which they ended up winning nine nil. Um, so that game basically I was expected to play um, with the guys who were returning late. So some of the lads who didn't play the Chilwells and all those guys yeah. who were playing mm. the following day, I think Thiago Silva as well, um, they were in that squad. So uh, they played are going to swim off and I was expected to play and then before the game I came into the training ground um, and I I was told I couldn't play the game so that's when I thought okay the contract maybe has something to do with it so I straight away thought you know because then I was a bit upset because I was thinking this is the only time I can literally show what I can do mm -hmm. still and, and play for the first time and I sort of like thought maybe the contract has something to do with it so I, I spoke with with Peter Cech and he basically um, explained to me that yeah the contract um, it is what it is there's one year left um, yeah, you've got one year left and obviously you know the situation, the club won't let you go somewhere on loan if you don't sign a contract. Um and while I spoke I spoke with him on the so phone. So what sort of length was this contract? Would it be a long term contract? Yeah, so it, it was a bit confusing because um there was nothing wrong with it. I mean, from a club's perspective from a club's perspective, where he was coming from was that I hadn't played for a couple of years and he was thinking maybe go somewhere for a year, play, get your fitness up, build your fitness up and then you can come back. Mm. Um, and I was saying, and he, and I, I literally, I had no idea about the contract. Literally, the ma the the game I was in playing against Wim after that's the time. Literally within that week is the first time I heard about what they were proposing and what they wanted me to do. So I had no idea, and I just said in that week leading up to that Wim off game in the friendly, uh, leading up to the Crystal Palace game, mm. I just said, okay, let me think about it, and I'll get back to you. So he was basically just saying, um, yeah, you haven't played for a couple of years. What we think you've got a year left now, so now you're fit. Um, what we're proposing is that you go and play on loan um, and that the contract that you have now you split it into two so for this year what you ha what you're on this year for example you split it into two over two years so um, you get half this year and half next year but at okay. least you can go and play so it was like um, an incentive based contract yeah so basically the contract that I was going to be on now instead of having extending for one more year and basically having the same contract now for one year and then the following year not the same contract they were basically saying take a cut of 50 percent ah, and then so okay, yeah. yeah so for yeah. example if you're i don't know uh on on 100 pounds let's say <laughs> <laughs> yeah. if you're on if you're on 100 pounds this year so if i'm on 100 pounds this year the whole year what they said is you take 50 this year and you take 50 next year uh, and then at least you can go and play on loan and I said in that week, when I first heard about it, I wasn't saying anything uh, bad or anything like that. I was just literally in the meeting. It was Peter Cech and, and, and Kuducini yeah. um, who take care of the loan guys and stuff. So they told me about the contract. And I said, I think we are training literally the same day we are training. Just before training, came in the same room. They talked to me about it. I had no idea about that we were going to speak about a contract. So I just listened about. I just listened to what they were saying. And I said, OK, I'm going to think about it. I'll speak to my my dad about it because obviously he takes care of all this stuff so i said i'm yeah. gonna yeah. then i'm gonna go for training um <laughs> and then obviously <laughs> the the that, i think that was on a wednesday um and the game was on a sunday so i'm training on a wednesday we trained with the first team the guys who played against Villarreal, um they had that separate recovery training and then the other guys who came on in extra time and stuff we all trained together mm -hmm. um and then the first day passed saturday pa friday passed saturday i'm getting ready 
you're thinking, yeah, my first game is coming against Weymouth. I'm getting ready after two years. I haven't played for a while with Chelsea. Even if it's a friendly game, you know, to me, it, man, it meant a lot, you know. Yeah, put on so, the shirt uh, again. Yeah. So um, it wasn't a training ground. And then I came in. When I, and then as I'm coming in, there's a team that's going with the first team. And literally three or four players were on the side. So when I came in, I thought I'm going to play. Um, I spoke with the manager. He wanted to see me play as well. The, the numerous times I spoke to him. Even when I had COVID, I told him literally when we're in Ireland, um, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good to play and whatever. So we had a good chat, really. So going into that friendly game against Weymouth, when I when I then found out I couldn't play, that's when I thought, okay, maybe the contract has got to do with it. Mm-hmm. So when I found that out on a Sunday, maybe the following day, I then had the chat with Peter Cech. Um and my my initial talk was simple. It was simply saying, listen, um, I appreciate the con- I appreciate the contract. I see where the club's coming from. Um, my initial thinking would be to stay here, be with the team, um, build some fitness, build momentum, and then see what I can do. Obviously, it's a COVID year. There's a lot of games. Yeah. Um, so I'm pretty sure we've added international games as well. The Nations League, stuff like that. Uh, Europe, uh, World Cup qualifiers. Yeah. There's a lot of games this season. So the, t- the, t- the squad depth is going to have to be big. Uh, I'm not asking to be uh, a player who's going to play every single game because yeah. obviously I haven't been there for a while. But I can be a squad player, or uh, a role player. Yeah. I can train, give my best in training. And if there's 30 guys on the squad, or well, there's 23 or 22, I'll be the last guy on the squad. Yeah. Uh, and then build from there. And then if I'm good enough, then we can see. And that's all, that's all I said. That's uh, that's all I said. So even <coughs> sorry, even contract talks. I said okay, I, I'm not really going to talk about contract talks. Um, and then if at the end of the day um, the club thinks I'm not good enough, then that's going to be it's going to be the end. But um, in terms of the contract, like I don't really care as long as I can show what I can do here because yeah. I came here at Chelsea to try and play here. Um, so that was the talk um, initially. So he obviously was part of the direction. So he had his own idea um, about it. And then I said, okay, uh, I'm going to speak with the manager. And if the manager says that I'm not good enough to play here, I will go. I will look at opportunities to go on loan. Maybe I'll go or leave the club or even put in my head that maybe I can go on loan and come back. Um, I spoke with the manager um, and I obviously knew what he thought of me in training and he was happy that I was back. And he, I explained to him the same thing. I said I would play here for free. Uh, literally, I would. the contract that I have now, it's not, it's not the question of a contract. So I'm disappointed I didn't play against way off in a friendly um and it's not it's not to do with a contract for me um i will literally play for free this year and then next year if i'm doing well this year we can always talk about you know i can i can basically extend this year and play for free and be a part of the squad be the last guy in the squad um train hard um basically build my way through training play the 23s get some fitness and then from there see it's a long season there's a lot of games um there's cup games the carabao cup that's why i made my my uh debut yeah, yeah. so i'm not even asking to start those games i was just mm-hmm. saying you know if i can yeah, come on and maybe yeah. play 15 20 minutes here and there um, and then see and build my way up. And then from there, if I'm not good enough, I'll be the first one to say, listen, I did everything I did. To, I did everything I could to come back. Um, and yeah, it wasn't it wasn't meant to be. But there's world class players. So I'm pretty sure that within one or two, three months, I'll be up to speed. Mm-hmm. And he understood. So we had a good chat and he said, listen, um, it's not up to me. Like the contract talks is something else. Yeah. Every time I've spoken with the club about you, um, we've obviously Peter Cech. The main thing was the contract. We could, I could feel there's something there in terms of your name, um, that they want the contract situation to be resolved. And I explained the same thing to him, that I could pay for free, this and that. And he said, yeah, I understand. I totally get what you're saying. Um, so yeah, that was the resolve. I spoke with Peter Cech. I explained the same thing, that um, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be here and I'm 25. But yeah, so still young. So I said, yeah, 25, I don't think I'm going to be going on loan again mm-hmm. to then come back or extend my contract, even if it's 50%. It's not about the money, but it's about, you know, if I did the same thing and went to play somewhere else, the following year, I'll be in the same situation again with one year left. So it would be again a situation where I'm moving around. So I said, it's either I'm good enough to play for Chelsea or I'm not good enough to play for Chelsea. And I know injuries have been a part of it and and that's that's part of life. And of I'm course. saying now that obviously I was fit, I was part of the preseason squad, you all start from zero. And then from there, you can try and take your chance. You can try and show what you can do. And you can build up. Like I said, I wasn't looking to play every single... I didn't say I want to be the highest <laughs> guy playing 90 minutes <laughs> yeah. like the guys who yeah. won the Champions League. But I still, I still know that obviously I could bring something in terms of even a bit of freshness coming off the bench in some games, even cup games. You know, the season, like I said, is long. There's a lot of injuries, as you can yeah. see now. Um, so, yeah, that was basically my thinking uh, behind it so and when I spoke with him. Like obviously, like, look, you've been at Chelsea a very long time. And for me, like this summer, a lot of the young players have decided to, to leave the club. We saw Livermento join Southampton. We saw Mark Gurhi, who I rate very highly, go to Crystal <coughs> Palace. We saw Daniil Simu, another young player, go to Southampton. So do you almost think that maybe looking back, you may have stayed at the club too long? 
I mean, there's always that thing of looking back. Mm. Um, Hindsight. You know, it's a difficult one because when you're in the moment, you do everything you can to, to win, right? Mm. To be in a situation where you can play for Chelsea, it's the only thing you want to do, really. I never really looked at other situations. Um, even when I went on loan to Spain the first time, I was in a great position in terms of going to other clubs, uh, clubs wanting me and speaking with Chelsea. And I always said, I will, I will only live here when I'm not good enough to play here. Or if somebody says, you've got to go. Um, that was always my thinking about the situation at Chelsea. Now, whether I was naive or wanted it too much, that's up for debate, you know, and you <laughs> never know. But, you know, in terms of how, who I was as a player, mm. who I think I'm still, I still am, but even more back then, playing regularly and not being injured, um, the first thing that came to my mind, like all the young players I think it would be, it is to play for Chelsea. I came, I came here at 15 years old, like I said. Um, there were times at 19 where obviously you hear, okay, you can go to another club, you can go to another Premier League club, or even abroad when I went to Spain. A few few top teams in Spain there as well, but I never thought back and said, "Oh, I wish I, I would have left." Or I wish I would have. For me, I always wanted to play at Chelsea. It's something I've repeated all the time. Um, I will never hide and say, you know, I want to go somewhere else. I, you know, I didn't have my. Ch for me, I gave everything I could to play yeah. for Chelsea, and I think that was always my mindset, even to the last, you know, last days. I think it could have been easy for me to say, "Yeah, do you know what? I'm going to go yeah, somewhere I'm else. I'm yeah, going to yeah, go. No, yeah, no, I'm going to." Yeah. I never had the feeling of leaving, partly because I thought I was good enough to play for him too. Um, so that was basically my thinking behind it. Now looking back is not something I'm going to do because, like I said, in the moment, I, I always think that you do what you think is best for you in terms of what your dream is. I think yes. if you have to be realistic, I think when I came back from Spain, my loan was good. I think our six months that were great. The second six months were not so great. I didn't play so much, but in terms of where my level was at and what I think I did in terms of playing, um, just purely playing, um, I thought I could work my way up in playing for Chelsea, mm -hmm. which was not playing every game because you're not going to go from being in, La Liga who, uh, being in La Liga the way I was at 19 and then expect to go straight and compete with Eden Hazard, William, <laughs> Pedro, you know, yeah. Yeah. straight away 19 minutes. But what you could do is bring a bit of freshness off the bench, play 15 minutes, if there's a couple games you can play that. And that was basically my thinking behind it. Now at the time, it wasn't as easy. Um, it's never easy, don't get me wrong, to play for the first team of Chelsea. It's one of the big clubs in the world. Um, but back then, it was even more complicated for young players to get in. Yeah. So partly, I would say, you can so look at it and say... So when you joined Chelsea, when you yeah. came over from Belgium, what yeah. was the promise to you? Because obviously, I know at the time, Real Madrid, Barcelona, yeah. all the big boys were interested in you. Yeah. Why did you pick Chelsea? Um, I think it was a mixture of a lot of things. Um, Chelsea was... A club that wanted me a lot and they wanted my family to come as well which for me was a big big thing um i'm not gonna lie and say that obviously other clubs wanted me and and w there were big clubs too yeah um but partly i think chelsea was a club that wanted my family to come with me mm. they invested a lot in me in terms of bringing my family over and i appreciated that that was one of the clubs it was them and manchester city that really wanted my family to come over um Arsenal, manchester united barcelona real madrid it was mainly me going somewhere and maybe staying in digs or staying with like families or, you know, La Masia where it's just players all together. And I think for my family, from that standpoint, it was better for me to go and have my family there in terms of integrating, which is something I also agreed to. So, like I said, Chelsea was also a big club. They just won the Champions League mm. um, when I came. So, for me, it wasn't. It was more so about having my family and being somewhere where we could develop, um, become better, better football player, and develop into. Because there's a gap between Belgium and you know mm. the big clubs in the world. Obviously, if you're playing in Belgium, it's very difficult to play in Belgium, the league, um, and then go straight away to a top club in, in England or a top club in Spain and play. Uh, when I mean top club, I mean the Champions League winning teams like Chelsea, Man United, Man City, those teams back then who are Man United was a big team as well back then, uh, winning the Champions League. Still are now, mm. but I mean... <laughs> I, see that, I see the top team now, but I mean, that back then they had yeah, Ronaldo, yeah, Rooney, Tavares. And at the time when I was going to, I had to leave, uh, to talking about those teams, it's a step from Belgium to go to a Man United, to a Chelsea, to a Liverpool, to a. You don't go straight away and play. Mm -hmm. So you have to build up, build up and progress. And then from there, try and bridge the gap by getting small minutes and, you know, getting more experience. You don't go straight away from Belgium. To boom, you're playing in those teams. That's, it really happens. I yeah, think because I was reading like an article where one of the coaches at Anderlecht said they were keen for you and your family to stay at Anderlecht for maybe a year or two, just so you can play first team football. They said at 17, Charlie Masunda, he's good to go. He can play first team football, and they were quite. They basically said they kind of use your example sometimes to preach to the young players now, saying, "Ah, oh, 
listen, look at Charlie Masonde. He had the world at his feet. You've still got the world at your feet because you're only 25. But they say sometimes Good buy your time. Yeah, I mean, it's it depends on the situation. I mm. mean, it depends on where you are, your progression and how you're feeling in your development. Every case is different. Mm. Um, I think that you can be used as an example. I think it's fair. I think it's not something I'm going to go back and say, oh, why are they saying it? Because people in smaller clubs, and I'm not saying it's a small club because I was there myself. It's the biggest club in Belgium. Um, I've won the most leagues there and I was very fortunate to start straight away there. My dad used to play there. So I came through straight away at Anderlecht and I played there, I think, for a good 10 years. I started at five years old. I left mm. at 15 as well. So it's also a big part of where I am right now. Um, but I think every case is different. Um, it, be, it depends on your development. It's, it's a funny question because I had a guy, player who's gone to um, Man City, um, who's young as well. He came from Anderlecht. He went last year. And he was calling me and saying, oh, listen, what should I do? And, you know, uh, <laughs> should I leave? Should I stay? They're proposing me. I've spoken with the, with the manager and uh, proposing me to be the first team and to be in the round, but I don't know. And this said, so listen, you know, if, if you're feeling that your development is at a, at, a, at a stage where you're thinking this is not, I'm not getting as much as I could out of this, then maybe you should think about going. If you think that you're getting enough, you're being challenged, even if it's the first team, you're going to be challenged, you're going to be, then you should stay. It just depends on how you're feeling, mm. where you are. You know, you can't you can't take every single case and say, you, that, listen, that's the example. Because for every example, there's somebody who's going to do something else and it's going to work. Mm -hmm. So do you get what I mean? Of so course. for me, what I always say is, if you're feeling, and that's where I was at Anderlecht mm -hmm. when I was 15, I wasn't to strong enough physically. I wasn't big enough to be able to go straight away in the first team of Anderlecht and play, which was a big team back then. They were in the Champions League. When I left, Anderlecht was a Champions League team. Mm -hmm. um, and so for me, it was literally as a kid, how can I develop with world-class players in world-class facilities because obviously Anderlecht is compared to Chelsea, the facilities are different. The footballs, th There's a lot of money into football in England in terms mm. of development. When you look at the facilities at Chelsea where you've got everything at your disposal, the managers, literally you play a game with the youth team, you've got, you can watch it on your laptop, you can see the games, you can, you've got data. Mm -hmm. Those things have changed, I think it's 10 years ago now, mm -hmm. but those things back then weren't the same in Belgium and anybody who was in Belgium would tell you the same. <laughs> um, so in terms of that, that side of the game purely, that's why I said to myself, okay, maybe I have to, I have to look to move somewhere else. Mm. And there were a few options who were all top teams. And I thought, okay, at least if I go to a top team, I can develop in terms of being in a world-class facility, with everything at my disposal, with players who will challenge me, with coaches who will get on top of me. And sometimes when you stay in your own club, you sort of feel like you can do whatever you want. Mm. And, comfort and, and, zone. And you want to take yeah, care of your I think So when I was in Anderlecht, I could, it's not like I could do whatever I want, but I, I was you in a feel, space where yeah. I thought like, this is my I needed, place. Kind I needed of to, thing. It was because yeah. I was there for 10 years. Yeah, yeah. Like I was very comfortable at Anderlecht. It was a fantastic <laughs> place, fantastic time. I enjoyed it a lot. <laughs> but I also thought, okay, if I want to bridge that gap to get to the top teams, what do I do? And so it's either you stay at Anderlecht, try and get games in the first team. But then again, you have to go to somewhere else in between. That's what I always think. You have to go maybe to a Germany or you have to go maybe to a France. Mm. And then from there, you can go to Chelsea. Mm. And I thought that maybe if you get used to the English game young and you come through the system, it might be an easier gap to the first team as well. So if you look at somebody like in Barcelona, that's why they're so great with the young players, is that those young players all come from the same system. They learn the, they learn, they, they learn the same type of football. When you go in the first team with world-class players who are the best in the world, they're already used to that system mm -hmm. and they've been playing with world-class players. So Messi was playing with Fabregas. Fabregas was playing with PK. Yeah. So it's not very difficult in terms of going somewhere and then going to play. Or if you go straight away in the first team of Barcelona, like, oh, I'm feeling out of place here. Because even though you're young, you understand the system, you understand the game. And it's the same thing here in the UK. If you come through the academy at Chelsea, which the young players are doing now, they're showing you yeah, exactly yeah. that. The, the Masons, the Reeses, you know, Colour. they're showing you that. Yeah. Basically, once you're used to that system, you're used to a team, then obviously you can go to the first team. But coming from abroad as a young player, it's very, very difficult because you can't go from abroad straight away into straight away going to Chelsea's first team. It's Lukaku very difficult. Lukaku showed that as well. Sorry? Yeah, Lukaku, that was the case with yeah, Lukaku. Yeah, yeah, I mean, when he came, you know, he it, and it's, it was a bit more, to be fair, it was a bit more difficult in terms of, it's not even just the quality, but in terms of how the club works. Back then more so, it was very hard to give trust mm -hmm. to young players. Um, Chelsea's always been a club, and it's nothing wrong with this because Chelsea has won titles, have yeah, yeah. won leagues, have won trophies. There's teams who, pro who prioritise having young players come through but then don't win as much. Like Arsenal. So, so, so or we can have, say, are we going to bring managers who have a right philosophy and we're going to keep them on for two, three, four, five years? And even though it's not working, and you can look at Chelsea and say, yeah, they replace a manager every two or three years, but they've won titles. It yeah, it so, works. So when I've been there as a young player and with Conte and I wasn't playing much, 
and then another manager comes and young players are not playing very much there is a balance of thinking as a young player maybe yes i could be playing more but you respect that chelsea is chelsea because they're winning titles and they have world-class players playing great football and winning titles and i always compared chelsea as with like real madrid yeah because i thought that you know they'll bring the best talent <laughs> And then, you know, they're there to win now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? And then that was always the case. And it was more so like that before. Now they're mixing young players. Yeah, because they had the, to. The I think with Chelsea, yeah, they couldn't sign foreign players. And yep. You have um, to give yeah. credit to the Tammies, Mason Mounts, reached yeah. in. They took their chances. Yeah. They took it. Yeah. I think most you have to, you have to give credit to Frank Lampard. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I think it's some, when I got injured, um, when I was in Holland, I got injured. I came back. I had my surgery. I was with the first team in the building the whole year. So I sort of like got an idea of how Frank Lampard was. Um, and he was an amazing person as well. You know, we, he's somebody at Coburn that we idolize as young players. Yeah. Um, and just to have him there as a manager, to see him the way he operated with the young players and the whole squad. I think that more so when we're talking about the players now, he deserves a lot of credit because yes, I know there was a transfer ban, <laughs> but it takes a lot of, yeah, you know, a lot of votes <laughs> to say, you know, we're going to put mm. the young players in, give them a chance. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and then from there, you know, like I said, He's, he's basically shown that young players can play for Chelsea. But you can't mm. say that before it was wrong what they were doing because they were winning. Yeah. But I think that now you can compare it and say, yeah, the young players are good enough. And I don't think it's now they're better than they were 10 years ago. It's just that they've been given they've opportunity. They've given an opportunity to play. They've taken their opportunities. And I'm very proud of the players who are playing. Um, but even before me, it was hard for players to play. And when I went into the first team, I could say, yeah, maybe I didn't get enough opportunities to play. Um, I didn't play enough cup games or games where I could show what I could do. Um, but even myself, when I looked at it, I was like, I played a lot of games compared to other people before me as well. So it's a difficult thing to say. But I would say that right now, um, when you look at the Champions League winning run and the way they played, um, I would say testament to, to Frank Lampard for giving young players a chance. Because mm. without him, um, a lot of these young players, and it's not even just the players playing for Chelsea. I think your Tariq Lamptey's, your, you know, your Fikai Tomori is yeah. playing in AC Milan. I think he's done a lot for the club because yeah, now he's done something different. So... Oh. It's on social see. media, I see like a lot of Chelsea fans saying, "Oh, why is Frank Lampard getting the praise when Tuchel's the one that's winning?" Like Frank Lampard's getting the praise for bringing all these young players through, but like you were inside the camp. What were the sort of things that Frank Lampard actually did to to keep the, everyone happy? Well, I wasn't training; I was injured. But from my, um, I'm just talking purely from me being a youngster at, at Cobham and seeing all the youngsters come through, mm -hmm. and in terms of me being in that same situation where before it was the pathway to the first team when I was there was a bit more tricky, was a bit more difficult um, to get minutes. So even mm. like FA Cup games was like, okay, should, we, should the young player play? Should he yeah, not play? Yeah, yeah. You know, I never, mm. I, I don't think I started a game in the FA Cup yeah. or the Carling Cup or the Carabao Cup, they call it now. Yeah, yeah. Um, I started against nothing. I'm not the only start I, I really had. Um, but Frank Lampard put the young players in those games. He put them in the Champions League. He mm. put them in the Premier League. You know, Reese, Tariq came on against Stars in the Premier League. They ended up winning 2-1. You know, on, so all of, oh yeah, so yeah. all of those <laughs> things, you know, yeah. just that from a, from the academy standpoint was fantastic for people like, like myself, like I've been saying now, that once you are in that sort of environment, you're winning youth cups, you're winning the yeah, yeah. youth league and whatever they, they've all won. Once you go into that first team, you can bridge the confidence because you know what it means to play for Chelsea. Yeah and you bridge it with world-class talent together, they can create something special because they are very good players. So it's not like if the level is that much higher, once you bridge those two together, players who've been winning the Youth Cup and all of that, they've been playing against each other from the from the off. Like Rashford's been playing against Fikayo Tomori. Mm -hmm. So if Rashford's been doing well for Man United, Fikayo went on to win the, 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 the Youth Cup. So why wouldn't he be able to play against Man United? And I think Frank Lampard brought that in. And so for the young players, even Mark Guillaume that we're talking about, yeah. started against Man United in the in the Carabao mm -hmm. Cup and did really well. So I and mean, now we see him at Crystal Palace. Yeah, so that's top. that's that's yeah. what I think. For, for, uh, Lampard's done really well, even with Billy Gilmore who played against mm -hmm. Liverpool. That before didn't yeah. exist, and we can yeah. talk about the transfer ban all we want. <laughs> you know, <it's laughs> and also you have to give the praise to like Jody Morris, Joe Edwards, all these guys that are helping the youth as well. Yep, that's that's something I'll always say. I think that Chelsea goes under the radar because I think. It's it's been two contrasts in terms of how they've worked at youth level and the first team level for quite a few years. Um, been here for ten years, and I think the last two or three years since the transfer ban really is when there's been a little bit more recognition for the young players and the, mm -hmm. the academy. Uh, but it's always been since I've been there really it's been I would say one of the best academies in the world. Yeah, and I'm not won lying. the youth cup yeah, like four years, yeah, three yeah, four years in a row. The yeah, talent so that's come through. Yeah, so winning the youth cup, winning the the UEFA youth league. So mm -hmm. those are all things that you know I credit to the academy setup and how they've worked with young players. And then obviously now it's coming through because those young players are playing in the first team. So I would always say that the coaching at Chelsea is Top second class, to none. I mean, yeah. 
you know, that great coaches, even myself, I learned so much. Um, being in a position at 18, 19, to then go and play in Spain, in one of the biggest leagues, to be confident to go and play and, and perform, is due to how, when I came to Chelsea, like I said, I wasn't comfortable. I wasn't in a situation where I could do what I wanted to do. You know, I was told and shouted at, and <laughs> you know, there was a coach called AD Vivash, who was also there, and under 18's coach, was my 21's coach as well. He was always shouting at players, telling them what to do, and he basically had a huge impact on what I did as well. So the academy setup has been great at Chelsea, and I'm very happy that now you can see that it can yeah, be done. The fruits so, of you know, yeah. that's something I I'll always say. I think, you go on. I just wanted to ask you in terms of like, mentally, how, how difficult has it been for you? Because you've been out for what, two years? Yeah, you were injured, two to three years. And like, you see fans on social media saying, oh, it doesn't matter, he gets paid X amount of money, just get on with it. I would love to be in your position, all of that nonsense that you see online. <laughs> like how difficult was it mentally and how important have the senior players been for you? Like players like, for example, Jorginho, Big Rom, who's promised to come on this platform. So make sure you show <laughs> him this interview. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's it's different because mm. when you're injured, you're sort of like alone. Yeah. Um, when I've been injured, I was mainly alone um, for the last two, three years. So I wasn't mainly of the first team squad coming at different times. Even last year for COVID, it was very difficult because I was just alone. Um, and so mentally it's it's a challenging one because it's like you're there playing and you know what it's like to be fit and then boom, that takes that gets taken away from you. And even before my injury, it wasn't as if I was playing every single yeah. week. You know, for players who are playing every single week at a Chelsea or at a top club and then they get injured and it's like a year injury, like Leroy Sané had and then he comes back and then he's playing. You know, it's not that bad because you were playing before you got injured. Van Dyke, we saw that. Exactly, like Van Dijk, exactly. Yeah. So they're in a rhythm, they're yeah, playing, yeah. they have already made what they have already had, they have that stature in the game, mm -hmm, you know, yeah. in terms of like knowing what they're doing. In terms of a young player who hasn't played much, who's at Chelsea, who's like, you know, I haven't played many games, and then you get injured. I went alone to Holland and literally a first friendly game, mm -hmm. I got injured. And then from there to spend two years without playing, it's sort of like mentally, it's like, the more it goes on for like after a year you're like after year, i'm going to be back and then you're like another year passes and that second year is the toughest one because after a year passes you're like okay i'm going to be back playing and then after that you hear that you have to have surgery and it's like everything i've done the year before it's i'm going to have to do it again okay. and it's alone it's literally with a physio it's yourself you have to drive yourself you have it's it's your it's your motivation it's how much you want to drive it to come back mm. it's a very difficult place to be in being injured for a long time. I think being injured for two or three weeks sometimes that's you good. Or even six months, really. I'm not going to lie. Uh, <laughs> in terms of like, because the career is long, honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have your Ronaldo's and Messi's who are playing every single game yeah. for 15 years, <laughs> but that's not the norm. Players yeah. get injured, Neymar's yeah. injured now, you know. Yeah, yeah. But if you're injured like for three or four months, sometimes that can give you a bit of a refresh feeling yeah. to it. You come back a bit refreshed, you've worked on a few things physically, um, you watch games, you're a bit more motiv motivated, and then you come back and you play. But when you're injured for two years, it's a fine line between you don't really know what it's like to play again and at the same time you're seeing everybody play but you're alone you're training alone with a physio you have to run hard train with train in the gym do all of this thing it's just you mentally just you so that was a very difficult thing mentally because it's just you li literally it's not like and that's what you miss the most about football what you enjoy the most about football which i've said for now it's been two or three years the hardest bit has been not being able to train with the world-class players every single day and that's been very, very challenging. Even like now, I'm, I'm training, obviously, I'm, I'm going to leave the club at the end of the year. Um, but it's like, you miss that feeling of being challenged by the best, you know? And that's one of the reasons I came to Chelsea. So that's the hardest thing. Mm -hmm. And then the hardest thing that I would say on top of that is that you're just by yourself. You have to drive it literally by yourself. You have surgery, obviously your family's there, but nobody comes and does rehab with you. You've got to do rehab yourself. You have the physio by yourself. And last year, funny enough, you said about the fun thing, um, saying that Chelsea are oh, they paying you the money mm -hmm. and whatever. Mm -hmm. Last year I was in a situation where I was at the club for COVID um, and we didn't have, so the first team had their own bubble. So you couldn't go in the first team bubble if you're not, if you're not playing, which is understandable for COVID. Um, so I had to go in the academy building. Um, the problem was in the academy building, also for COVID, you couldn't use the facilities for, there was restrictions. You couldn't use the gym for more than 20, 15 minutes. You couldn't have a physio for 15 minutes if you needed rub or if you needed ice or whatever you had to be in there for 15 minutes and i had possibly a career ending injury and i was trying to rehab and trying to come back from that and people telling me okay 
when I had my, my surgery the year before, they were saying, yeah, you're going to only have max 20% chance of playing proper football again at the top level. Any other level, fine. If you want to run, if you want to, but if you want to play top level again, if you, wanna f if you think you're going to play for Chelsea again one day, that's going to be very difficult. And so a year after that COVID happened and you couldn't do all of these things in the gym and this and that for COVID. And the first team, they had their own separate bubble with their own restrictions. So I was by myself with my physio, who was fantastic. Um, and we had to basically go challenge around the clock and say, okay, we can't use the gym, we can do this. And I, had to, and I ended up getting myself a membership to a gym around the corner. A public Lloyd's. gym, public. Public gym, public gym. <laughs> going there in the coming in the morning doing a bit of work, going in the evening to David Lloyd's um, for like a month um, and doing that. That was at the start of the season. And then I said to myself, listen, I can't, there's not much I can do here. I need to be doing more than this because otherwise I'm not going to come back. It's not one of those injuries where it's straightforward like an ACL where, you know, it's something that I knew that if I don't do the maximum, I won't be able to play again. Yeah. So you have to do everything you can. And so even like a David Lloyd, I did, I did that for a while. After that, it still wasn't good enough. I still didn't have time, enough time for the physio because, again, you can have a schedule where you're working in the morning, you're doing your treatment, and you're saying, okay, this is not enough. But then the physio you're asking, he maybe has a family, he maybe has things mm. to do. And then it's very hard to coordinate times and whatever. So what I ended up doing is I went to Dubai. Yeah. I went to Dubai to do my rehab. It was great. I was there for two months. What a place to do rehab, by the way. Uh, <laughs> great sun, you know, sun every single day. Um, and it was basically I wanted to go somewhere where every single day I would have the attention to do my knee properly. Uh, so from training twice a day, physio, so was eating. this privately paid for, or did the club? Yeah, exa so, exactly. So that's, so I paid for that myself, every single thing. So I was initially going to go to Belgium. Um, there was a doctor who I know personally. Um, he goes way back. He reared my dad when my, da when my dad was injured oh. for a little bit. He's quite intense, um, and he basically I um, got his number. Aiden Hazard said to me, oh, what's going on? Are you injured, this and that? So <laughs> he messaged me and he said, okay, if you're still injured, go with this guy. And I knew the guy. So Aiden gives me his number. Um, so after I've spoken with the guy, the guy says, yeah, no problem. You can come to Belgium. We'll take care of you. And the thing is, Belgium was one of the countries, the restrictions were not as much as the UK. Mm -hmm. So I could still go to a public gym, work out for a long time, all of that stuff. As I'm speaking with the guy, I'm like, okay, here at Chelsea, I can't do enough still. Um... I spoke with the guy and the guy says to me, yeah, but now I'm, I'm in Spain, I'm with Aiden. I've got, because Aiden just got injured as oh, well. Okay, yeah, yeah. So I was like, if I go to Belgium, I won't have one-to-one -one with this doctor, it will be somebody else. So I knew a guy in Dubai who also knew a physio, so I ended up going there. And everything I went, so I said to the club, listen, um, at the moment, I'm not doing enough here. Um, so I need to go somewhere where every single day I can be on it, like the whole day. Um, and so they understood. So at the beginning, the do club doctor, it's, it's, there's a lot of politics in football. Yeah, of course. <laughs> you know, <yeah. laughs> we <laughs> know. They didn't, didn't, didn't want me to go abroad. But I was saying, yeah, it's better you stay at Chelsea and whatever. But when I was there, I was saying, you're not doing enough. So it was splitting uh, talks. Was, I was saying, yeah, I clearly can't do enough. And then I trained with my first session. It was in a year and a half with the under 16 at Chelsea. And then I, I had my knee was swollen again. And when I mean swollen, it was swollen. I said, okay, I, c I need to go somewhere where I can be on every single day. So I spoke with Chelsea and they were like, okay, if you want to go, um, you got to go to a place to, you, you got to go to a place in Serbia. And I said, why Serbia? Um, they said, our oh, player went there before and he, he, he's well now. And I said, okay, but th what, what's the schedule? What's the schedule there? What do you do? What's it like? And um, they basically said, they train you hard there. Well, it's, it's one guy who went there. So it's the guy who, who went there before me, his name is Baba. Baba Raman. Yeah, Raman, yeah, he went there yeah, yeah. and it worked out well for him, but he mm -hmm. went there through his agent. So mm -hmm. when he was in the same similar situation the year before, I think, he said, oh, I'm not doing enough here, I want to go somewhere. It's also good to clear your head as well. So he went there and then um, he was a bit better. He's still been in pain, but he was a bit better. Um, so then Chelsea was saying, proposing me to go there. And I was saying, so I asked Baba, the, what, what, go, what goes on there when you're there? And he said, okay, um, you go there and you've got a PT who gives you a schedule and you do it by yourself and you just you go and you run I was like that's not good for me yeah. I'm not going to be able to do that so literally I came back to Chelsea to the doctor it's just between me and the doctor and he speaks straight away to Marina uh, and he said okay I said um, I don't think I want to go to Serbia I'll, I'll drive go back to Belgium and then the Belgium thing happened with Eden he was injured the guy obviously went to Eden so I couldn't go there so then I said I'm going to go to Dubai um, so the Dubai guy, I knew him. There was a physio there that obviously worked in Celtic and worked with a, a guy that I knew. So he stop. He will take care of your knee. So I ended up going there. Um, when I went there, Chelsea said, okay, you, you, if you're going there by yourself, um, yeah, you, we're not going to sort out anything. And I said, okay, it's not a problem. I will, I'll pay for everything I need to do. At the end of the day, I have to make a decision whether I stay here 
and I just go along here, training here one hour, doing f physio 15 minutes of treatment, doing the gym, that's not enough, and then going to David Lloyd's in the evening and basically taking care of myself that way or just saying, do you know what, I'm going to do everything I can, even if it's costing me a lot of money, mm -hmm. to try and get back and play. Because this injury, like I said, is something, if it was something that was straight straightforward and I knew how to rehab and do all of this stuff, um, then I'll probably just stay. But because I knew it was something that wasn't straightforward, that doctor said to me, you know, you have to do everything you can to get back, otherwise it's going to pop again. I said, okay, I have, to, I have to do it. So I ended up going to Dubai. I stayed there for two months and I paid for everything. And it was... Uh, it was flight, accommodation, Everything, trade. everything. And it was, you can say, oh yeah, but you have a lot of money. It was a lot of money. And in terms of rehab, it's things that you don't know. Because when you're rehabbing at Chelsea, if you have to use a machine or whatever, you don't really know the price, you just do it. Yeah, right? yeah. So yeah. there was things like tests and all of these things and physios and physios, I mean, physios and personal trainers in the gym and all that. I paid for everything because I always said, <laughs> even if I'm paying for it, at least I'll be fit for pre-season. That was the main thing I wanted to do. <laughs> Honestly, that's the main thing I wanted to do. So yeah, obviously I stayed for my contract at Chelsea, but even my treatment, I paid for everything and it was a lot of money. Uh, like really so we're talking money. six figures no not six figures but a lot of money still okay. in terms of like rehab and, and coming back to do everything you can doing it by yourself um it's a lot of money like there's things like um something called an isokinetics test so you put your leg in oh, and like it sort the of boot, measures the long boot no you saw like it's like a, you know like the leg extension when you're doing like your mm. quads oh, okay mm. yeah it's similar to that but it holds your leg and like calculates the weight that you're pushing through for your knee okay, okay. so even stuff like that you you do it at chelsea and it's like you have no idea of the cost because you don't course. really care. You come in, you do it, uh, and you, you have the yeah, test, right? Yeah, bro, but when you see it, exactly <laughs> when you're paying for it yourself, you're like, oh, this this is actually very expensive. Yeah. And all of these little things are things that I did. Um, and I stayed there for two months, and I was feeling better, feeling really strong. Then I came back. Uh, came back last year in December. And then from there, I trained with the 23s through the end of the season. Um, and then I was I, I ran into Thomas Tuchel in the um, in the car park, funny enough, oh. before, uh, before that Champions League Fight before the Champions League semi-final, the return against Real Madrid, I think it was, okay. and he just said, you know what? I, I met for, met him for the first time, <laughs> and he said, uh, you know what? Uh, obviously, he knew me from before because he was in Dortmund. Mm. Yeah, were so they interested in you then? I th <laughs> might have. Um, <laughs> yeah. I was playing in Spain. Might have. Um, yeah. But I, I spoke to him quickly, and he was like, okay, what's going on? And I said, uh, I said to him, listen, I'm going to be ready for preseason. I'm just going to be ready for preseason. That's that's all I was really worried about. Yeah, and yeah. at that time, I was literally when I was back training with the physio at Chelsea in the mm. evenings by myself and that's how I ran into him into the car park. Um, so yeah, I said I'm going to be ready for pre-season because that's what I wanted to do, really. So it all links back to this year where I was getting ready for the pre-season mm. and all of that. So that's that's where it's at, really. Um, so yeah, in terms of leaving now, it's sort of like a, it's sort of like a shame feeling because you have, I, you know, you sort of like been pushed out, if that makes sense, uh, yeah. by, 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 by the club. I mean, not the manager. I mean, the manager, no problems whatsoever. Um, we always had a good dialogue, always talked really well. But for stuff other than that, that's the reason literally why I'm leaving. I mean, I, I asked many times, I even asked Peter Cech or who was the basically the the guy controlling the situation. I said to him, if, I'm, if, it, if the reason is I'm not good enough, I'll go tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It's not a problem. If I still can't play, if I'm not at the level, if because of my injury, I haven't come back and played the same or that's purely based on training. If I can't do what I'm supposed to do in training, if I don't have the level, you can tell me and I'll go. Um, and that was never the conversation. And that was never part of the talks. So it's just a bit of a, a weird mm -hmm. feeling. But Mixed at the feelings. Because yeah. what I was going to say is that, obviously you're saying you've been frozen. That. And when I look at it, it's been like a 10-year commitment from your family as well. So how do they feel about like the situation? Who, my family? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not, it's football, you know? Mm -hmm. It's not like uh, I'm going to ask them every single day. I mean, it's, it's football. You have to look at it. There's things that you could have maybe done better. Um, but that's again, it's looking back. When things are going great, nobody said I'm going to look mm. back and see what could have gone better. You know, you look at. I don't know if you guys watched the Formula One. Oh uh, uh, yeah, Hamilton and Verstappen last, yeah. Yeah. last, last lap. You know, yeah. and then you can go. Okay, if Hamilton then went into the pit to change his tires. Would it have changed? But then maybe they would have said the virtual safety car stays on, and then Hamilton have been second. Mm -hmm. So you can look back and say, yeah, he didn't go in. But maybe if he went in, they keep the same rules, and then he maybe ends up second, and they end up with the virtual safety car, and he goes. Why did I go in? So, or maybe he just stays like he did try to do yesterday and they say, okay, we're going to keep the 10 second gap and then he stays and then there's one more up to go and it's good. it would have been very difficult for him to get back and beat Hamilton. But what happened is something that we've never seen before yeah. happened and you end up losing and Verstappen wins it. So you can't then look back and say, yeah, if I'd done this, if the team had put me in for the pits, if this had, you know what I mean? Because everybody's trying to do what they, what they need to, to win and to be in a good situation. 
So Verstappen was doing what he could do to win. He was gambling with the tires. He paid <laughs> off. <laughs> paid off. Yeah, he was at yeah. the front. Boom. He he, he <coughs> overtook him. So that's how it, that's how it is. So even in terms of my family, like now, you can't really say because they've invested you in back. you. They came. They came from yeah, Belgium with you for you to pursue the dream kind of thing is what I'm saying. And for it to just end like this is yeah, of course. No. I mean, that's why I say it's a, it's a it's a weird feeling because I never thought I was gonna be. Um, I was going to be pushed out, if that makes sense. Yeah. I never thought, I thought that once, um, especially the way I worked hard to get through the preseason. I spoke with Peter Cech last year, really. Said to him, oh, mentally it's been difficult because I'm trying to get back and training by myself. And uh, from the preseason, there was no real checkup on how are you doing mentally, how are you doing, you know, there was no real, real checkup. Why, why, why is that though? Like, because we've interviewed Yannick Balassi and he was pretty much saying the same thing at Everton. There was... There's, they've taken a decision to freeze him out and that's pretty um, much it. There's no one's checking up on you. You're yeah, going into I, training, training by yourself. I don't really think it's everybody who freezes you out though. I think it's from a from a business decision where the contract is what it is. I yeah, think but can't, can't the manager, like for example, Thomas Tuchel, who's uh, for me one of the best managers in the world, I'm sure you will agree. Um, can't he say that I like Charlie though? I don't want... Yeah, but I think you know, you have to sort of like pick your battles. You mm. know, if if you have like mm. a, a squad of 23 players and if I'm a manager in the top club, working with a technical director, mm. there's some battles that you can pick, some battles that you just say, okay, do you know what? I've just won the Champions League here. You know, I'm not going to try and, <laughs> not being funny, but yeah. uh, I'm not going to try and fight for a player who, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, who's going to change my squad because I've just won the Champions League. Obviously, he was fighting for Lukaku. He yeah. was saying, yeah. listen, <laughs> I'm <mean, it's> right. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. You to, exactly. Yeah. So I'm saying if you, there's, there's clear and obvious things that you can say okay i'm going to fight for this because it makes sense and it's the same thing i explained to me he said listen the only track record i have from you is in spain that was a long time ago mm. like that's that's the only track record i have from you and i know obviously even from watching you in training and stuff that we, we know what the if potential is player, we can yeah. see it but i'm saying even in the preseason, the problem is that you had covid and it's unfortunate you had covid and you couldn't play the friendly games and that would have been a good opportunity for me to maybe to say to the to the club listen you know, even if there's a contract situation, I will get it. It's okay, no problem. Mm. And that's why maybe some of the lads who have played, who have gone on to play this year, have had their lacks is because they've had that building pre-season where they've been able to play and then go into the squad, like Trevor and all these players. Because mm. like then you can have yeah. that sort of like track record. But, but someone like me, Trevor was playing last year in France, played against the manager, and then in, in PSG before he left oh, and came yeah. to Chelsea. And then like this year, he had a good pre-season and then went with the first team. Mm. Whereas I hadn't played for two years, was injured, and then from there, the preseason, the first few games I have to play, I, um, I've got COVID. Yeah, and, then the, and then, yeah, just yeah. before coming back, the season starting. Yeah. So he can come and turn and say, okay, even though there's contract situations with this guy, I'm going to put him on. Because realistically, he has a squad of 23 players who have been playing consistently and who, are, who he knows and who he knows, okay, these players are going to play. And even though he might like you, which is something that I spoke to him, we were very honest. There's nothing wrong about uh, him as a man. I have no problem whatsoever with him. He was fantastic and honest. Mm. I, I could tell that, okay, it's maybe the question of timing, and he said the same thing. Timing wise, things could have been a bit better. So in terms of being, in terms of being frozen by the club, I wouldn't say I, I've been frozen by the club. Mm. Like the academy have been great with me, even like now training with the twenty threes, they've been great. They've supported me, obviously. I think they know that now I'm leaving, um, and then obviously it's just yeah, the, the 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 technical director who didn't want me to stay. Um, that was basically that. I think it was more his decision than the manager's decision. I think if he would have said to the manager, Charlie's willing to stay. Uh, we're willing to okay listen to what he said in terms of like getting more minutes yeah. uh training and then from there based on merit playing the cup games being a squad player there's a lot of games in the season yeah if that was a the talk there the manager would have zero problems but in terms of that he wouldn't pick his battles by saying you know listen i'm going to fight for charlie he yeah. wasn't paid for two years mm -hmm. if i played every single week that would have been different yeah or played in the preseason that would have been different but to not play for two years and i understand then, where yeah. it's coming from where even though that's great he has a squad to pick and then from there he also has to consult the technical director mm. and, and all there's a whole a structure who, in place exactly. at Chelsea it's, exactly. not, it's more exactly. than the manager so if a player hasn't played then it's more so a collective decision mm. for him to override somebody and say oh Charlie it's has to be call. in the squad yeah. it's better if, if I had played that then would make sense more then you have more exactly because yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think Chelsea point. is the type of structure like if you compare it to like a Liverpool Liverpool you can clearly see like Jurgen Klopp has a lot of autonomy whereas at Chelsea it seems like there's a structure that the manager fits into that yeah. kind of thing I that's think I think that's the way it is in modern football now as well yeah. I think a lot of clubs are like that um, long, go, long gone are the days where managers Have oversee everything <laughs> um, and uh, having power is one thing but I mean just overseeing everything mm. um, Arsenal Wenger Arsenal Sir Alex, Sir Alex, Sir Alex Man United yeah. I think that now in football has gone where now players are coming in 
who have big statues, players as well. Football has changed as well. I think that players have a bigger stature. We say it's more of business, but players have a bigger stature. They bring more in terms of revenue and business and whatever. We've seen like you look at like stuff brands like, now. Exactly. Ronaldo, so, yeah. <laughs> so you look at so you look at it differently as well. Whereas you bring in some some of the big clubs get managers who are purely there to coach the team and get the max out of the team. Not to do with transfers, not to do with anything else. Whereas before you did everything, now managers is basically you come in, there's a crop of players, you manage that squad, yeah. try to get the best out of that squad, and that is it. So, you know, that's what I would say in terms of that. So, Charlie, w- what I wanted to say is that you're like a cult hero amongst Chelsea fans. They love you. Like, yeah. every time online you see positive messages. Yeah. Obviously, now that it's sort of like a long goodbye, you're yeah. going in the summer. Yeah. What sort of message would you want to, like, tell them? Um, <laughs> I mean, it's a difficult one. I have Even the the post I did on Instagram, wasn't I wasn't going to be too emotional with it because I didn't want to, to go long into the memories and long into the details of everything. I think it's a difficult one. I spoke with Peter Cech in August on the phone. And after those talks, I knew straight away, okay, I'm I'm going to leave in, in, in August here. There's nothing else I can do. Um, and then from there, I already knew. So I was literally the following days, I was crying. After the phone call, I was literally crying for a long time because I'd been there for a while, I for like a week or so. It was very difficult to get around. Even now, to be honest with you, it's going to take some time to get, to get around it. Um, it's still mentally difficult. In terms of that going in training the 23s every single day even though you're training again you know um so if you have to talk about it now for the first time i would say yeah the fans have been great they've been more than you than i expected them to be for me um and even when i was injured there was always somebody i would bump into somewhere i'm not not lying here <laughs> i'll be going maybe to to westfield or I'll be <laughs> going you know to i'll be walking somewhere in london somebody would stop me and tell charlie don't give up keep going Oh, don't give up and yeah. literally there were many times i was thinking like this is very difficult because you're training every single day by yourself you've got to drive it you've got to and some days really you don't want to do it like i'm not gonna lie you can love football well. you can love it so much and there's some days we're like okay i don't want to do this and every time that happened i'm not lying here yeah it's a coin like every time that happened i'll go someone some i'll bump into somebody i don't know oh uh, charlie keep going don't give up like we've been watching you and all that every t- i swear to god and that's something that basically has really touched me Know that the fans have been there more so even now. They've always been amazing with me. I mean, from the time I came all the way through playing with the youth teams, playing with the first team, my debut and being there. Then when I got injured, all the time they were there and saying, don't give up. And that's partly one of the reasons why I didn't give up. And it's not just that, but there's always been these signs of just keep going. Um, and the fans of Chelsea have been part of that. And even now, um, they've been saying, oh, we wish you luck. We know everything that's gone on. We wish you a lot of luck. Everything that's going to happen with you. And I would say, yeah, they've been amazing. Like, people always talk about Chelsea fans and say whatever they want to say. <laughs> like, they don't make any noise. And <laughs> this and that. But, um, you know, that's, for me, I would, I'd be lying and saying they're not the, they're the best. Like, they've been amazing. They've been great fans. Um, and I wish the club also the best. Uh, it's not just the fans. I mean, the club, the academy has given me so much. Um, yeah, injuries are part of life. Um, yeah. It's yeah. part of the game. You can't look back and be sad because it's part of the game. Um, I've been injured for so long obviously I was injured for two years I had surgeries this and that but in terms of looking back at the club there's nothing wrong I could say mm. and like in my exit is sad now because I know that I had to leave like there was nothing um, I could do I spoke with uh, yeah the people at the club that take care of the situation um, and it was quite clear that I didn't want to go alone and I wanted to show what I could still do at Chelsea and then if I wasn't good enough then I would go and that wasn't playing every single game that was literally just being part of the squad, yeah. training through, uh, being like the young players who were coming through from the 23s, yeah. being on that level, and then seeing what I can do, and then be a r- like, if there's injuries or anything, you never know in football. Um, that's literally what I wanted to do, to show what I could do, because I do think that I could have done more in terms of having maybe more opportunities, um, maybe be doing more when I had the opportunities, you, don't, you never know, but mm, that's, hindsight that's, that's, funny that's, thing. That's, that's, the, that's the only thing I would say. I think that, you know, I never really had that chance to really start games you know and that's mm. something that then you get injured you're like oh you know if only this had happened if only i could start games if only i could play in an fa cup game and start you know those type of things mm. which which right now are a given you know there are something that young players are doing you yeah. know they're doing constantly obviously it's not a given you have to work hard you have to train hard but you have more of that opportunity since frank and since now you have that you've, we've seen that young players from Cobham can play so that's what i would say really it's just that feeling of i would have thought i would have left either by not performing well and then you leave that's mainly what it is or you stay because you perform well and you stay but i, I never thought it was going to be like this that you're mm. leaving where mm. 
you haven't really played yeah. we don't really yeah, know what yeah. could have been you know so Literally. that's 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 yeah. that's the funny thing about it and the future you never know mm. i mean you never yeah. know <laughs> um, yeah, but Char, i think that's a perfect yeah, way to yeah. move on because <laughs> We've spoken about obviously the sadness. Let's be optimistic. There's mm, a future. Yeah. Yep. You're only 25 years of age. Yeah. In terms of where you're at, Menti, what sort of stage do you think you should be performing at? Is it? Is there any preference in terms of leagues, Premier League, Spain, France? Like, where's your head at? Um, that's a f- it's a good question. That um, I really don't know. I mean, where I would say is that I've been processing for the last two, three months, maybe leaving Chelsea. You yeah. know, it's not something that's easy to do after like 10 years, like I said. Um, and people can go, oh, yeah, but, you know, like people, normal people say, oh, yeah, but you could have left a long time ago. Or you could have, you know, you could have, you could go at the end of the week and go. But when you've been somewhere for 10 years in a club like this that I've, I love, I mean, before coming to Chelsea, I didn't love Chelsea as much as I love Chelsea now. That's how much I love mm. Chelsea. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just a process really of thinking, of, of training, getting fit, staying fit. Um I'm not even so worried about games. That may, I'm, I know it might sound crazy, but I'm not so worried about playing the 23s right now um, because I just want to, to train, stay fit, you know, um, and then from there I'll see where, where things go. There's no preference in terms of leagues or anything like that um, because I don't think it's one of those things that you choose. I think they, that situation sort of like finds you. Yeah. So um, whatever. Club's been on the phone to your agent asking about your availability. Like yeah. So uh, it's mainly mainly my dad that um, does that. Um, speaks with, with clubs and stuff like that. But right now you can't really speak with clubs. Otherwise, that's tampering. You know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> until <laughs> until um, until January. So so from January you can start speaking with clubs. clubs Foreign clubs. Con- right? Yeah. Uh, more concretely and talk about stuff for the future. Um, and and then we will see. I think, like I said, the future the future nobody knows. I mean, I've worked out to get back fit. I obviously was trying to get back fit for the fit for the preseason. Um, I didn't know up until August that I was going to leave Chelsea. Like it's something that's very very recent. So as if I was thinking, okay, I'm getting I'm going to get back fit and I'm going to go on loan. I had no idea. I was literally trying to get back fit, get for, get into the preseason fold, and then see what happens. And I always thought that if I do well, I would still be able to play for Chelsea because I've never really played. It's not like if I had played a few games and then I hadn't performed well you know if I would played maybe a track record yeah, of five games yeah, five yeah. full games or you, you know come canvas, 70 like, minutes exactly yeah, and then you can yeah, say okay do you know what yeah. Chelsea's not my level it's one of those ones where I don't really know because <laughs> I never really got that <laughs> chance to play a full 90 minutes in a big game mm. or a full 90 you get what I mean or yeah. even an FA Cup game where you start or even a Champions League game that's a bit lower um, when I was there with like Carabag I was in our group I think mm. those are, those were the games that you sort of feel so like okay, like the whipping boys you know the group, yeah, where yeah, you qualify. I wouldn't and say the whipping boys because it's it's professional football. <laughs> <laughs> it's professional football. So you have to be yeah, so I'm, t- I'm talking as a yeah, fan. Uh, I'm you, have be, you have to be. You have to be. Uh, you have to be when you're yeah when you're playing football. Obviously, yeah. there's no easy games. Yeah. Like we know, especially being at Chelsea, it's it's uh, every game is a difficult game. Um, but there were sort of games where you'd go and look at and say, okay, do you know what these games. I might be ready to play this, and you, mm. that's what you feel really. And those are the step for any single young player playing in the top team. That's the thinking. That's the the mentality. Obviously, you think that you can play the big games. You think you're all there, but you're not. Um, and I knew as well. I wasn't. Every time I spoke with the manager or with Conte, I said, "Listen, what I want to do is have an on a, a fair chance to show what I can do in those games, which is where everybody sort of like starts." And in, when I look at those games. I don't look back and say, "Yeah, I had the chance to to play those games. Mm. I had I had the minutes. I had." I had the track record. I don't really go there. And that's what's difficult to sort of look at. Yeah. Um, even in terms of level. Like if I knew that I'd played five, ten games, uh, gauge I could say, you know what? Yeah. yeah, Chelsea's not my level. You know, mm-hmm. I can't really. But that's not the case, you know. Uh, so that's very that's a very tricky side of it. Mm-hmm. Um, well, we, you're so just gonna have to yeah. live with it. Like you go, yeah. 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 So yeah, we we all know that you're you know you are amazing talent, and we yeah. know that you still have that talent. So once you get on the football pitch, we just hope everything works out well for you. I think, look, for me, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the podcast, and thank you for being so open. But before we round up, we just want to ask you questions outside of football. Yeah. So in terms of like, what do you like getting up to? <laughs> that's funny. That's a good question. Um, that's a fa- that's a good question. Actually. Fashion, mm, not very. Not, nah, more of <laughs> video a, games. <laughs> not really. I mean, I, I I do play video games, but it's always against my brother. It's not um anything anything big. I what game? Him, what game do you play? FIFA. Yeah, FIFA. Mm. Do you know? I'm I'm a lot into the American sports. Okay. Yeah. So I like like Madden. Okay. Uh, which okay. Is American NFL. football. Yeah. NFL. Yeah. There yeah. you go. Um. 
yeah, do you I watch like, much football outside of football? Do I watch much football outside of football? That's a good question. Um, I'm, I know a lot about football in terms of like growing up, I always watched every single mm. game and most of the games. And when I got injured, funny enough, I stopped watching most of the games. I would only watch the big games. Um, I think Is that because you just wanted to stay away from the game yeah, and mentally think, you were disenfranchised yeah, with the game? Yeah, I think partly because... I think it's both. I think mentally you don't want to be watching too much of football if you're not playing it. Mm -hmm. But then you're still interested enough that you want to watch the big games and yeah. see what, what the big games are like. But um, yeah, I would say in terms of like watching football, I would say now I watch a little bit more football, but more with the more to do with my rehab as well. That my rehab times were times where you train maybe like twice and then like in the evening you're maybe tired. Or like at 7.30, for example, you're working out and there's a game on at 8. So you're rehabbing and you just can just catch like 15 minutes. So like, okay, I'm not going to watch the game. So it was mainly to do with my rehab, really. I stopped watching games because there were at times when I was doing rehab more than me sitting down and having time to watch the games because I was training. And then, for example, if once you're fit and you're training and you're in a training squad, if you're not playing and you're, you've trained, for example, at 10 a.m., then you've got the whole evening off. So if the Champions League, you can watch Champions League, you can watch it in the evening. If there's games on the weekend, Chelsea are playing, you're there. Then on the, you have the, the Sunday, for example, the Super Sunday, you can watch the games. <laughs> but for example, on Sunday, I would maybe be doing rehab. So mm -hmm. I'll be maybe busy when there's a game. So through that, really, I just didn't watch it as much didn't mm -hmm. watch the games as much but i was all i would always watch the big games like mm -hmm. champions league i would always watch uh premier league big games i'll always watch i'll always watch like the top top six teams who are playing uh if it's man united playing if it's liverpool playing man city chelsea i'll always watch them um and, and that's it really i just like to watch you know great players mm -hmm. um i like so to who's watch your favorite player because you look like the sort of Neymar type of player like that's yeah, your I mean, you know end product skills dribbling yeah. you like to enjoy yourself <laughs> Yeah, I do. <laughs> I hope I, I can still do that. But um, yeah, I'm sure you can. I've been I seeing the yeah. clips on Instagram. No, I mean, yeah, we will have to see. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic. You know, I'm just thinking about mm. getting back playing football again. You know, and and then seeing what I can do. But I'm optimistic. About, and if you said, yeah, my favorite players, yeah, Neymar is definitely up there. He's somebody I've always looked up to. I mean, he's a great player on the ball, but he enjoys himself on the pitch. You know, football's mm. not it doesn't have to be a job. You know, it's not. Being so injured, sometimes. Did you find coaches might try and take that out of your game? Like, let's just pass the ball, stop doing dribbling, or have you always been encouraged to like, you know what, Charlie, go out there, express yourself? Um, when I was in Belgium, I think it was, I, you know, it it was sort of like there's always that element of if you're doing something and it's a bit different and you are taking time on the ball and you're trying to dribble and you're trying to do things to be creative. There's always going to be that fine line of things coming off. Mm. things are coming off but then you lose the ball and it might look a bit stupid or whatever mm -hmm, it is yeah. so i think to be that type of player sort of like enjoy feeling a lot if that makes sense mm -hmm. so you don't have to mind especially when you're young it's easier because the games the results don't really matter yeah um obviously you want to win every single game um the more i came to chelsea i was at an age where i was 15 16 by the time you're playing the FA youth cup and those games then obviously results start to matter mm -hmm. Um, but before that really results didn't really matter and so I was playing Anderlecht which was a big team in Belgium and we were winning a lot and we had a very good team so it was very easy for me to do skills and, and, and win games but when you come to England at like 16 and 15, 16 the first game I think I came here uh, was against I think Arsenal we had a game in the pre-season against Arsenal uh, I'm not kidding uh, and I came on uh, literally 15 minutes in, in with the youth team I was six I was a schoolboy, but I came on with the under 18s in pre-season mm. and I was thinking this is just fast like that it's just going quick you know mm. and there was no time to do skills and whenever I would try something and it doesn't come off you know the coach would be shouting yeah, at yeah, you yeah, and yeah, you're like fuck. you know and so <laughs> you sort of like second guess it you know yeah, like, you know but after that you know in training you get confidence and then mm. the more you train the better it is and then you in games you, you do it i think it's something where you have to get more and more confident with it but never forget who you are because if i'm going on the pitch just pass the ball yeah that's not people you. know this isn't like, charlie so, yeah, so, like, <laughs> even, like, even like now when i played two games in the 23s and i'm from the off i want to do things with my head's going quick and whatever i'm like okay i'm not there yet i've been injured oh, wow. you know you yeah. forget but that's who i want to be you mm. know so i always said that that's who i want to be and people ask me yeah why do you want to play football i think the reason why I wanted to continue and play football is purely because that's who I am, you know? It's a feeling that you miss. And when you're injured, it becomes a job because mm. it's like you have to train by yourself. And people won't understand it, but people who are injured will relate with me that it becomes more sort of a job because now you have to look at everything you're doing. You have to look at the rehab, the way you're doing it. You have to look at all the things that you're doing in terms of like sleeping on time and stuff like that. When you're actually injured, 
that's very very important it's important all the time mm-hmm. but i mean some players play and the nutrition is not great it's not i wouldn't say it's shit it's like zero out of ten mm, it would right. be maybe like a four or five but they're playing every week and that's okay because they're playing every week they're performing so it's fine you don't second guess it but once you're injured if you're eating well if you're, if you're eating bad that sets you back yeah. if you're not getting all of those things set you back and that's why it's more of a job because not because you those things are things that you have to do from the off you have to eat properly you have to sleep on time when you're playing that's something you have to do to stay on top of your game but more so it becomes a job because you're doing this by yourself and football mm-hmm. is not an, an individual sport like it's it becomes it's a yeah. team sport you love training with other people you love playing possession games you know shooting drills comparing, and especially a player competing. like you you deserve you deserve to be under the lights under the spotlight yeah, you want, you want you to play, but even training training is something that's you're big on so um that's what i would say um so I would say that basically it's, it's because of who I am that I wanted to, to continue and I want to play football because of who I am. And so when you talk about skills and stuff like that, it's the reason why I want to play football. Mm. And when it's not, when I don't want to play football for those reasons, then I would know, okay, do you know what? This is not worth doing. So when I was injured, I always thought, okay, when I'm watching the games, I'm like, at the situations I'm looking, I'm like, I know what I would do in a situation. I want to do this, I want to do that. Or you're watching players like Neymar or you're watching players like, and you're like, this is the type of football I want to play. This is something I want to do, mm-hmm. you know? And that's one of the reasons you want to do it because it makes you feel happy. Um, so those, that's the main reason why I continued through my rehab and trying to get back. Obviously, for the people who've been following me for a long time as well, in Belgium, who helped me get to here, my parents, my mom and dad, who uh, my brothers, obviously, who helped me get to here. So for all those people, you sort of like, I can't give up now, right? Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? So... That's that's mainly the reason. There's always going to be talks about other stuff, you know. If you had, if you had stayed, if you had done this, if you, but I mainly do it because I know that how I want to feel playing football, and more so the people, uh, even like yourselves, inviting me today, you know. Come on, man. Uh, Come on, man. Pleasure. Pleasure. I'm saying, you know, the p- that's why I really do it. Really, mm. and there's days where mentally you're not there. Um, especially now, I know I'm going to leave. It's going to be tough for maybe three or four months. Just but I know that once going. exactly yeah. once once you know once that goes away and once you start to get close to a new start when you're feeling fresh again to play it's going to be exciting so yeah um i'd like to say thank you to you guys for inviting me i'd like to say thank you obviously to all the chelsea fans who have helped me along the way um not only when i was coming through and playing and feeling good but also when i was injured who have never given up on me fantastic people um i'd like to thank everybody at the club who always treated me well um and then obviously yeah, from myself personally, it's uh, it's just looking to to build now towards the future, um, and like I said, the future nobody knows. You know, my dream is still to be at the top level. So um, yeah, I think challenging the odds when people said I wouldn't be able to play at the top, that's why I'm trying to play as well. It's gonna take some time. You know, I'm gonna I don't have any set mentality of I have to go straight to the top right now, because that's not realistic. But I do know that you know, if if 26 years of age, which I will be when I'm gonna be playing again. It's, it's a lot of time passed, but I think from 26 to maybe 32, 33, there's a good window there to do something good. Salah. So this is where Salah started. To yeah, I mean, the, the difficult thing, I don't want to compare myself to players yeah. who've been playing because they were fit. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. What I'm trying to do is something that's very difficult to mm-hmm. do. It's, it's borderline impossible because it's three years without playing. Uh, and I say three years because two years I was injured and the year before getting injured, I didn't play much either. So it's a lot of fitness that you don't have in your legs. Mm. If I was playing now even non-league, like every single week with players and I wasn't injured, it's easy to have that stepping stone all the time where you're just stepping up, stepping up. You have that fitness in your legs. You have that. That's easier. But to to basically be training by yourself for two, three years and go from there to maybe one day playing at the top, it's it's a a very impossible journey. So it's something it's going to be challenging. So when you talk about the sellers and and the people like that who've been playing at a lot, even even Kante, who came from a long, basically third division and cropping up playing in France, coming to Leicester, playing now for Chelsea, when we're winning the World Cup, winning every single trophy every, after every year. Um, it's not something I compare myself with mm-hmm. because I'm not, I haven't played for two or three years. I'm sort of like in a situation where not a lot of people have been in, yeah. where you can't be playing for three years and then boom, one day you're at the, you're the top. And that's also an exciting part of the story. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, it's just about training, staying fit, um, believing in yourself really, because yeah, I, there's nobody I can really look at and say he's done what I've done. Mm. Um, you know, Vardy again was non. I don't know he where he was, playing. Playing, but he was playing. Football. You know, yeah. he was playing football. So it's it's a difficult one. But I think in terms of the legs, it's just about like I said, if I have the legs, maybe at twenty six next year, which I will be, then until maybe two thirty three, thirty three. I think now there's the right diet, there's the right, you know, information around. Yeah. You know, for for players to to play on longer. Ronaldo's a good example. Yeah. He's been playing, but again, he's a good example that at thirty six, thirty seven, he's still one of the best. You know. 
So it can be done. You know, that's that's the only thing I would say. It can be done. I'm optimistic that basically if I play um, for a year, a, two years, three years, then after that probably, mm-hmm. even I'd say after a year or two, you know, you can have that jump or you can do something. So it's just about fitness and being who I am as a player, really. Um, and then from there we'll see. But it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a journey, you know, mentally yeah. it's a journey, physically it's a journey, just to get back to that to that space where you can, you know, perform again and, and get people excited again, really. We're so. going to be following that yeah, journey, yeah, definitely, yeah, man. Yeah, it's yeah. been a pleasure to talk to you. Yeah. As Dot said, you've been open, transparent, and yeah. I think a lot of Chelsea fans are going to enjoy listening to this because they've sort of been wondering, where's Charlie? We don't yeah, really don't. hear from him. We've seen Insta posts. Yeah. But I think today, like, you've explained everything mm-hmm. yeah. in terms of all the technicalities of the situation, yeah. the fact that it's not you that wanted to leave the club. No, never. The fact that the club told you that, obviously, yeah. with the contract situation. So, yeah. Yep. No, as I said earlier, thank you so much, bro. We, no we no really no. appreciate it and we wish you all the best. No so we're going to leave it there. Um, that's another episode of the Beautiful Game podcast. As I mentioned earlier, please follow um, the YouTube channel, which is the Beautiful Game podcast, and follow our social medias down below. Thank you very much, Charlie. No and have Love a good day. Thank you, bro. Thank Over you. and out. Cheers, Peace. Guys. Thank you.